You are welcome. Today's lecture is on coordinates. We're going to discuss about organisms and the phylum core data. Now, what are coordinates? Coordinates are basically the terrestrial silomates of the kingdom Animalia that at some stage in their development have a post anal tail, a dosal hollow nerve cord, a skeletal rod node cord, or geo slates. The geo slates are uh, also referred to as endostyle or pharyngeal pouches. Now take note, the chordates are referred to as the pterostomes. And what are these pterostomes? The pterostomes are organisms who in their embryonic development formed the anus before the mouth. The silomates are organisms that possess body cavity. Codates are also bilaterally symmetrical. They possess a bilateral symmetry. So they belong to the group of animals called bilat bilateria. Now, we want to look at some very important feature of the codates. There are about 65,000 species of cordates, and they include the amphioxus or the lancelets, the tunicates, which are also called the sea squirts, the fishes, the amphibians, the reptiles, the birds, and the mammals, including us, belong to the phylum chordata. Now, the phylum chordata have organisms that share these four common features. And these features are one, notochord. The chordates possess a notochord, they possess a dosal hollow nerve cord, they possess post anal tail, and they possess an endostyle or the pharyngeal slits or just slits. These are the four major cardinal features of the chordates. Now I want to look at each of these uh, cardinal features that are found in cordates that are not found in other group of organisms. The notochord is the first one to be discussed. Now what's the notochord? As the name implies, at some stage in the life cycle of cordates, they develop or they possess a stiff dosal supporting rod that is called the notochord. The notochord defines the longitudinal axis in the embryo. It is located just below the nerve cord, that's the dosal hollow nerve cord. It persists in some cordates, but in others, it is replaced during the embryonic development by the vertebral column that forms around the nerve cord. So the backbone at some stage, particularly in vertebrates, replaces the notochord, or the notochord differentiates to form the vertebral column, and it now encloses the dorsal nerve cord. The second major feature of cordates is the dorsal hollow nerve cord. The dorsal hollow nerve cord runs just beneath the dorsal surface of the animal. In vertebrates, the dorsal hollow nerve cord differentiates into the spinal cord and the brain. The third feature of cordates is the post anal tail. Cordates have a post anal tail that extends beyond the anus. Post anal means beyond the anus. And this post anal tail is found virtually in all cordates, especially during the embryonic development. But uh, as adults, some cordates actually lost this uh, feature. The tail is usually later absorbed. But clearly in humans, the tail is lost and it's, it remains as the tailbone or the coccyx. But, uh, Virtually every other cordate have a post anal tail. Though the amphibians too, the amphibians in the 
other anura, actually frogs and toads actually lose their post anal tail as adults, but as juveniles, the tadpoles, they possess a post anal tail, a tail that extends beyond the anus. Nearly all other animals have a terminal anus, like the earthworms, they have an anus that uh, is at the tip of the tail. And even the, the nematodes and others. So that's one basic difference between the chordates and the other organisms or the other animals. The fourth distinctive feature of chordates is that they also possess an endostyle or pharyngeal slits or gill slits. The pharyngeal slits or the gill slits are common to chordates and not found in other groups of organisms. Now, what are, what's the endostyle or what are the pharyngeal slits? The pharyngeal slits are glandular grooves in the floor of the pharynx. They are glandular grooves in the floor of the pharynx. They are openings between the pharynx or throat and the outside. In terrestrial vertebrates, the slits do not actually connect to the outside and are termed pharyngeal pouches. In terrestrial vertebrates, uh, the, the slits do not connect to the outside. So they are called pharyngeal pouches. The pharyngeal pouches are present in the embryos of all vertebrates, including humans. They are present in the embryos of all vertebrates. They become slits and then open to the outside in vertebrates with gills, particularly the fish and uh, the, some amphibians, and they leave no external trace in those without gills, particularly uh, the mammals, the birds, and the reptiles that do not have gills. Now here is a generalized uh, embryo that's showing the four principal features of chordates. As explained earlier, chordates possess four major features. And those major features are described here in this generalized embryo. They possess a hollow dosal nerve cord or a dosal hollow nerve cord. And they also possess pharyngeal pouches. They possess notochord, and they also possess uh, a post anal tail. Here is the anus. Now, the uh, those are hollow nerve cord uh, in the embryo differentiates or later becomes the brain and the spinal cord in the adult. Then the notochord, which is just beneath the dosal hollow nerve cord, becomes the vertebral column, the backbone in vertebrates. It persists in other corded groups like the amphioxus and the tunicates, even in the adults. Then we are, they also have a post anal tail and a tail that extends beyond the anus. So these are the four major features of cordis: a hollow dosal nerve cord, pharyngeal pouches, a notochord, and a post anal tail. All cordis possess these four characteristics at least in one stage of their development. For instance, Humans have pharyngeal pouches, a dosal nerve cord, a post anal tail, and a notochord during the embryonic development. As adults, the nerve cord remains and the notochord is replaced by the vertebral column. The notochord in humans is replaced by the vertebral column. The nerve cord becomes the spinal cord and the brain. All but one pair of pharyngeal pouches is lost. This pair forms the eustachian tubes that connect the throat to the middle ear. One of the pairs of the pharyngeal pouches remains in the adults, and this one forms the eustachian tube, the tube that connects the middle ear to the throat. The post anal tail regresses to form the tailbone, which is called the coccyx. 
this figure helps to illustrate the fact that virtually all codecs have similar embryonic development. And at least in the embryonic stage, the codecs possess the four cardinal features that are common to codecs. Now, if you look at this figure, you will notice that uh, the embryo here has gel slits or the pharyngeal slits, which is common to, which as found in the fish, it's also found in the salamander. They are also found in the tortoise, they're found in the chick and the rabbit, and also in humans. They note the uh, dorsal hollow nerve cord is also found in all vertebrates in the embryo. And then the, uh, the notochord is also found. The same thing is applicable to the post anal tail. The post anal tail, the tail that extends beyond the anus, is also found in all vertebrates in their embryonic development. And as they progress, some of them lose such, uh, lose their post anal tail, particularly the humans lose their post anal tail, but virtually every other vertebrate retains their post anal tail. This figure is also helping us to uh, visualize the eustachian tube. And like we said earlier, the eustachian tube is formed from the pharyngeal pouches. The eustachian tube connects the middle ear to the throat. It connects the middle ear to the throat in humans. Codex possess a number of other characteristics that distinguish them from other animals. One of such feature that distinguish them from other animals is that their muscles are arranged in segmental blocks that affect the basic organization of the coded body and can often be seen in the embryo of this phylum. Just as we saw in the embryo, the muscles are arranged in segmental blocks. They are segmented. So codets have that feature that distinguish them from other uh, animals. The second feature that codets possess that distinguish them from other animals is that most codets possess endoskeleton against which the muscles works. They possess an endoskeleton. The endoskeleton is either made up of a notochord, a cartilage, or bones. They possess an endoskeleton, a skeleton that's inside the body, just as a skeleton of humans. Let us now look at the classification of chordates. The phylum chordata is classified into three subphyla. Codits are classified into three subphyla. And the three subphyla are the subphylum urochordata or tunicata. The subphylum urochordata is also referred to as tunicata. The second phylum is the phylum cephalochordata. And the third phylum is the sub, the third subphylum is the subphylum vertebrata or craniata. The third subphylum is the subphylum vertebrata or craniata. Now the word craniata is derived from the fact that they, they, are, they possess a skull that encloses the brain. Then vertebrata means they have vertebral column. Now let's look at the first uh, subphylum, the subphylum urochordata briefly. The subphylum urochordata, which are also, the organisms are also called the urochordates, these are primitive marine animals that have a sac-like unsegmented body and a urochord. The urochord basically referred to as a notochord that is limited to the caudal region, to the tail region. So they possess a urochord that is conspicuous in the larva. So to re-emphasize, 
the Eurocordids are primitive marine animals that have a sac-like unsegmented body and the Eurocord that is conspicuous in the larval stage. Now, these uh, organisms, like we said, they are organisms that are found in the oceans. They are found in the oceans and they are sac-like in nature. They are sac-like in nature and they have unsegmented body. Just as you can see here in this figure, they have a sac-like nature. This is a tunicate, a typical example of the Eurocordates. A typical example of the Eurocordates is the tunicates or the sea squirts. The sea squirts belong to the subphylum Eurocordata of the phylum Chordata, kingdom animalia. The second subphylum is the subphylum Cephalochordata. They are also called the cephalocordates. Typical examples of this subphylum are the amphioxus or lance legs. The organisms in this phylum, subphylum are fish-like animals having a notochord rather than a true spinal cord. They are fish-like animals that have a notochord rather than a spinal column. So they do not have a vertebral column. They do not have backbone. They retain their notochord even as animal, uh, as adults. They retain their notochord even as adults. So adult cephalocordates, the amphioxus, do not have a, a vertebral column. They do not have backbone. So they are non-vertebrate chordates. They are non-vertebrate chordates. They are called cephalochordates because they are, they are notochord extends from the tail up to the head. They, they are called cephalochordates because they are notochord. And unlike the uh, eurochordates that have the notochord at the tail, only at the tail region, the, the cephalochordates have the notochord that extends from the tail to the head. That's why they are called cephalocordates and they are fish-like vertebrates. Just as you can see in this uh, figure, they usually are burrowing organisms. They burrow into the sand and extend their head upward. Their head is only part that's lifted above the, their burrows and they are actually filter feeders. The next subphylum is the subphylum vertebrata or craniata. The name being derived from the fact that they have a vertebral column, as you can see here. So chordates that have a vertebral column of bone or cartilage belong to the subphylum vertebrata, okay? They are also called craniata. Craniata means they have a skull, a skull that encloses the brain, that protects the brain. So the subphyla urochordata and cephalochordata are known as protochordates. They are both classified into a subgroup known as protochordata. Thank you for watching. Next, we'll look at the various subphyla in detail, including the anatomy and physiology. Thanks.